chapter 13. Luke's gospel, chapter number 13. This is part number 67. It's hard to believe. Part number 67 in our journey through the gospel according to Luke. Luke's gospel, chapter 13. We'll begin with verse 10 this morning. If you're able, when you get there, would you stand with me as we honor God and the reading of His Word? Luke's Gospel 13, verse 10. As he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, a woman was there who had been disabled by spirit for over 18 years. She was bent over and could not straighten up at all. And when Jesus saw her, he called out to her, Woman, you are free of your disability. Then he laid his hands on her, and instantly she was restored and began to glorify God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant, because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, responded by telling the crowd, There are six days when work should be done, therefore come on those days and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, Hypocrites, doesn't each one of you untie his ox or donkey from the feeding trough? On the Sabbath and lead it to water. Satan has bound this woman, a daughter of Abraham, for 18 years. Shouldn't she be untied from this bondage on the Sabbath day? And when he had said these things, all his adversaries were humiliated. But the whole crowd was rejoicing over all the glorious things he was doing. May God add his blessing to the reading and now the preaching and teaching of his holy word. May Jesus Christ forever be praised and all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Get your priorities right. That's the title of the message this morning. You know this as well as I do, that sometimes well-meaning people have wrong priorities. Sometimes I have wrong priorities. Sometimes you have wrong priorities. Sometimes, actually, a lot of times, the church has wrong priorities. And so we've got to get our priorities right. What's the most important thing? On what do we focus? On what do we spend our time? On what do we... expend our energy? On what do we spend our money? These are the things that are our priorities. I remember being a kid growing up at my home church, and and the pastor of my home church, Harold Lawler, he was there for 27 years, the only pastor I ever knew as a kid. And one of his catchphrases, a phrase that he would say all the time, it, it would hardly be two or three Sundays would go by without him saying... Hey folks, the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. Now let me say that again. The main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. We major on minors and minor on the majors, amen? We need to get our priorities right. Jesus, thank God, Jesus realigns our priorities. I don't know if you have realized this or not, but that's what has been happening through us going through the gospel according to Luke. Our priorities hopefully have been realigned and hopefully week in and week out as we have been seeing the teachings of Jesus and as we have been building upon the ministry of Jesus, our, our own priorities that have been out of line hopefully have been put back into line. In line with who? In line with Jesus. By the way, that's another reason why preaching straight through books of the Bible is important. Here's why. Because in so doing, folks, when you're here on Sunday morning, when you have given an hour of your time to to come here and to worship God and to hear God's Word, you're not coming here to hear a message, to hear a sermon based on my priorities. You're not here this morning to hear what I have to say. At least I hope you're not. You're here this morning... To hear a message on the priorities of Jesus. And we do that by going chapter by chapter, not leaving anything out, not going over anything again. 
getting the priorities of Jesus. You see, what I preach on on Sunday morning is not up to me, amen? It has been providentially decided by the Lord Jesus Christ. So, if you're here this morning and this message hits you square between the eyes, it's because you were supposed to be here this morning, and the title and message of this morning is the particular one for you. Jesus, thankfully, realigns our priorities. In the previous verses, previous chapters, Jesus has been preaching and teaching to great crowds of people. Uh, last week we saw that Jesus says, you better, pri- you better have the priority of repentance. You better prioritize repentance and getting right with God because you don't know how much time you have left. And so you better get right with God. You better do it today, Jesus said. We pick up this morning, there's sort of a break in the text. And this week we see Jesus going to church, or or something very similar to that. It says that on the Sabbath day, Jesus goes to the synagogue. That's very similar. It's a good analogy to us being in church on Sunday morning. Their quote-unquote church was the synagogue, and their day of worship, their Sunday, was the Sabbath or Saturday. And so we see here, Jesus goes to church. And Jesus is actually teaching in their synagogue, in the church. And at the end of the service, Jesus sees this woman. And this woman is all bent over. She is hunched over. And she cannot straighten up. And Jesus is aware that she has been this way for 18 years. And he says to that woman, woman, come here. Come here. And he probably knew her name. Come here just a second. I just caught what I said there. Jesus didn't probably know her name. It's Jesus. He knew her name. Sometimes my mouth gets ahead of my brain. He says, come here. Hey, woman, you are free from this infirmity. You are free from this evil spirit that has you disabled. And he places his hands on her and heals her. And the woman immediately straightens up. Can you imagine that? Never have, You haven't stood up straight in 18 years. Can you imagine that? You've been bent over, hunched over for 18 years. Jesus calls you out. Jesus sets you free. Jesus touches you. And you can stand up straight once again. That's pretty awesome, isn't it? And the woman begins to praise God and to glorify God for for what Jesus has done. And then the preacher comes up and says, what do you think you're doing? (laughs) We don't do that on Sunday. We don't do that here. That's not in our program. That's not in our statement of beliefs and mission. There are six other days. Let her come back on another day to be healed. And Jesus said, you bunch of hypocrites. Don't you go out on the Sabbath day. Don't you go out to the barn on the Sabbath day and untie your ox or your donkey and lead it to water to drink. Now, that's doing work on the Sabbath. You see, that's what he was complaining about. That's what the the preacher, the synagogue leader was complaining. You're doing work on the Sabbath and you're not supposed to do that. And Jesus says, well, you led your ox, your donkey to water so it could drink on the Sabbath. Of course you did that. You untied your donkey and led it to the water. Shouldn't this daughter of Abraham be untied from her infirmity and set free from her infirmity and led to the living water of Jesus on this Sabbath day? Jesus was saying, I can think of no better day for this woman to be set free than the Sabbath day. Amen? And it says there in that last verse, in verse 17, it says that Jesus' adversaries were humiliated, good, and all the people rejoiced. Jesus said, no, this woman has been tied up by this evil spirit, this spirit of infirmity for 18 years, and she's not going to be tied up for one more day. Jesus had the right priorities, friends. And I pray God this morning that we will as well. Number one, let's look at, first of all, observing 
Jesus as priorities. We, we, we've summarized the text. We see there the story and what is going on. We see that Jesus went to church. Now, that's a priority of Jesus. You, you see, you can read this and say, well, see there, the Lord's saying that we can do all kind of work on, on Sunday. So all that stuff your grandma told you about not working on Sunday, we can all throw all that away. Well, just be careful there because, look here, Jesus was in church. Where's Jesus? He's in the synagogue on the Sabbath day. Being in church on Sunday was a priority of Jesus. We need to establish that from the beginning. Jesus places a high priority on being in the fellowship of God's people. Friends, there is no substitute for the church. There is no substitute for the family of God. Those of you who have been ill or had extended illnesses where you couldn't come to church, you can testify to that, amen? You wanted to come to church. You you watched the television program, but it just wasn't the same. You you watched the, the DVD or the YouTube video, but it's just not the same because when we're gathered together, all indwelt by the power of the Holy Spirit, it is as if the love is multiplied. It is as if the power is multiplied. It is as if the grace is multiplied by us all being together. No substitute. For the fellowship of God's people. Jesus prioritized being in church. But Jesus, number two, prioritized people. We're observing the priorities of Jesus. His priorities, when he walked in there, he was prioritizing people. What I told the boys and girls is true. Hey, listen. Listen. You are important to Jesus. You matter to Him. You matter. You may think that nobody cares for you. You may think that you're all alone in the world. You may think that you are forgotten and rejected. You may think that you are cast off and cast aside. But friends, I want to tell you today that you matter to Jesus and He is the one who matters. Jesus prioritized people. The religious leaders prioritized rules. You can't do that on the Sabbath. And they loved all of their religious rules, these religious leaders in the synagogue. That they, would, they had like these books, and the books kept on getting thicker and thicker. And they would tell you like, for example, how many steps can you take on the Sabbath? Well, you can take this many steps. I'm just sort of um, summarizing here. You can take ten steps. On the Sabbath. But if you take 11 steps, you've done work, you've committed sin, you've got to do a sacrifice to atone for it. So 10 steps, not work. The 11th step, you've started working, and you can't do that on the Sabbath. You can't pick up sticks on the Sabbath. Listen now, you cannot pick up a stick on the Sabbath. That was their rule. Their rules even got so complex, so complicated, that there was this big discussion about, okay, so Granny falls in a ditch on the Sabbath. Can we get Granny out of the ditch, or do we have to leave her there? Is it work to get Granny out of the ditch if she falls in the ditch on the Sabbath? Well, yes, it's work. So, you, But you can be excused from that. And so these are actual rules in their rule book. This ain't in the Bible. This is just rules they're making up. If it's going to rain, you can get Granny out of the ditch. Or if it's going to be cold, you can get Granny out of the ditch. If it's just going to be sort of cool, you've got to take Granny a blanket and leave her in the ditch until after the Sabbath, then you can get her out of the ditch. How foolish! Stupid! And Jesus says, you hypocrites! All your rule making. We say, yeah, we would never do anything like that. People today... And churches have wrong priorities. I hear stories from other preachers, and I, and I'm, I have books of preacher stories, where you, things that have happened to various preachers. And, and, and I read one one time about this pastor of this church, and, and uh, in the children's department, the, uh, the crayons were, were all in terrible shape. They were all broken. They were all just sort of piled into a bucket. And, and so this lady, this good sister of the church, decided she's going to donate some boxes of crayons to the children's department. And so she buys a big box of crayons for each one of the children's Sunday school rooms. And, of course, there's a sticker on each box given in memory of or in honor of somebody, you know, all that stuff. And uh, donates each box of crayons to each Sunday school room. 
A few weeks later, a woman comes up to the preacher. Pastor, we've got a problem. Oh, he's heard it before. And she says, Pastor, you know those boxes of crayons I donated to the children's department? Yes, sister. Well, do you know those boys and girls aren't putting those crayons back in the right place in their boxes? And there are boxes of crayons being all mixed together? Do you know that in one box there were three red crayons and not a single brown crayon? Do you know that, that the, the black crayon in the box in room 313 has already been broken? It's only been in there two weeks. <laughs> this supposedly really happened. Do you know what that woman needed to do? She should have got her boxes of crayons, put them in a frame behind some glass, and hung them up somewhere with a plaque on it that said, Will everybody please look at me and pat me on the the back for buying some boxes of crayons for the church? Her priorities weren't right. Her priorities were on getting recognition. Her priorities were on having somebody pat her on the back. Her priorities were seeing the little label on some boxes of crayons. Her priorities, listen, should have been little boys and little girls coloring pictures of Moses. And little boys and little girls coloring pictures of the cross. And coloring pictures of baby Jesus. And in coloring those pictures, learning the Bible stories, her her priorities were wrong. Her priorities were not on people. Jesus prioritized people. Jesus prioritized setting people free. It says here, Jesus said, Woman, you are set free from your infirmity. You are set free from your disability. I like how the old King James puts it better. Old King James says, Woman, thou art loosed. That sounds better, doesn't it? Loosed, set free and loosed means the same exact thing. But it just rolls off the tongue better to say, Woman, thou art loosed. The religious leaders of Jesus' day, they bound people. That's the opposite of freedom. They made up more and more rules to tie people up and bind people down and put people behind bars and lock them in. And the religious leaders were putting heavier burdens on the backs of these people. And Jesus said, Woman, thou art loosed, thou art set free. Set free from what? Do you notice this in the text? This woman was in spiritual bondage. She did not just have a physical disability. She did not just have a physical problem. Look at verse 11. Uh, Verse 11 there. And uh, a woman was there who had been disabled by a... Say that with me. Say it again. A woman was there who had been disabled by a spirit for 18 years. She had a spiritual problem problem. She was in spiritual bondage. There was an adversary, there was a demon listen to me, a demon sent out by the devil to get in that woman's life and to cause her grief and misery. And for 18 years it had caused her grief and misery. She had a spiritual problem until Jesus said you are loosed. You are set free. Folks, I believe there are folks today, listen to me there are folks today Ladies, you need to hear that. Woman, thou art loosed from what binds you. Men, you need to hear it too. I believe Jesus speaks the same to you. Man, you are loosed. You are set free. If y'all would help me, I would preach a little bit. Woman, man, thou art loosed. You're loosed from your addictions. The addictions that bind you down and tie you up, you're loosed in the name of Jesus. Amen? Hear the voice of Jesus. Hear Jesus speaking to you and saying, Man, woman, thou art loosed from the temptations that beset you on every side. You are loosed from the work of the devil clawing at your back every moment. You're loosed. Man, woman, you are loosed from the oppression and the depression that the devil brings into your life. The gloominess, the darkness that seems to encircle your mind and fill your spirit. Folks, listen. Put your spiritual ears on and hear the Lord Jesus speaking to you, saying, you are loosed. You are set free. 
Jesus speaks to you. And He says, man, woman, you are loosed from the guilt that you carry around. Man, woman, you are set free from the guilt and the shame of things in your past that the blood of Jesus has washed away and cast into the sea of forgetfulness. You're loosed. Man, woman, you are loosed from your feelings of inferiority. You are loosed from your adversary. You are loosed from your temptations. You are loosed from the shame. You are loosed from the guilt. You are untied. You are free. You are set out in open places because Jesus has said you are free. Jesus prioritized setting people free. Jesus prioritized the glory of God. And worship of God. Verse 13, uh, Jesus, He laid His hands on her and instantly she's restored and she began to glorify God. Verse 17, when they had seen, when He had said all these things, all His adversaries were humiliated, but the whole crowd was rejoicing over the glorious things He was doing. Hey folks, when priorities are right, people are set free. When priorities are right, God is glorified. When God is, when uh, priorities are right, people rejoice and praise God. At least people who don't have a hard heart like the adversaries who are humiliated. We're observing the priorities of Jesus. We've got to move. Number two, we're going to apply Jesus' priorities. Hey, folks, we've got to get with the program. Jesus' program. The hour is too late, the night is too dark, evil is too strong, and the end is too close for us to have the wrong priorities as the church. Now, I believe that officially we have the right priorities. Officially, on paper, we have the right priorities. Now, probably hardly anybody in here knows our mission statement. Our mission statement says that New Bethel Baptist Church exists to help people know and love Christ, to help people know and love each other and make Christ and His love known to the world. Now, those are the right priorities. But are we following them? We need to be constantly asking that question. We need to be asking, are we helping people know and love Christ? Are we helping people know and love each other? And are we committed to making the love of Jesus Christ known to a lost and dying world. If our priorities are not those, then our priorities as a church are wrong and need to change. That's how we apply the priorities of Jesus to our church and then to we as individuals. Jesus' ultimate priority was the cross. Everything He was doing was taking Him to the cross. Everything He was doing was journeying to Calvary. And it was there. You've checked out. Get these last few sentences and we'll be done. It was there on the cross that he set you free from your greatest bondage. It was there on the cross he cut the cords that bound you the tightest. He set you free from the strongest chains of sin. You see, the Bible says that we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. The Bible says, but God demonstrates His own love for us in this, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him will not perish, but have everlasting life. What are your priorities? Do you have the right priorities or wrong? You say, preacher, they're wrong. Well, get with the program. Jesus' program. (coughs) What about our church? (coughs) Are we on the right program? Are we on Jesus' program? We need to look at that and answer that question honestly. Lastly, what is... Do you need to be set free from today? Then hear the voice of Jesus saying, Man, woman, thou art 
loosed. In this invitation, you come and do business with God. And you hear His voice saying those things. The altars will be open. We'll be glad to receive you as a member. We'll be glad to to let you publicly profess your faith in Jesus Christ. Believer's baptism, receiving Him uh, through faith and then professing Him publicly through baptism. Invitation is your time to respond, and I pray you will. Let's go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, I pray that some, some chains have been broken today, some cords cut, and some freedom found. I pray that people have heard your voice and now will respond in this invitation. Bless this time, we pray in